Hey guys, and welcome to another episode of the Fab Show. So on this week's episode, I'm going to be restoring the exterior of my E46 Touring. I'm gonna to be installing an M Sport bumper on it. So I've already gone ahead and washed the car and clay barred it. I spared you from seeing that for the millionth time on this channel. Uh, so I am gonna be installing the M Sport bumper, but before I do that, I'm gonna try and fix some defects around the car. Um, see like that. A pillar there is, or is that a B pillar? Whatever pillar that is, it's uh, peeling, so I'm gonna put some SEM trim black on that, I'm gonna install the M bumper, I'm gonna fix some of the paint blemishes around the car and try and make it look a little bit better. Uh, so with that, let's first just walk around the car and try and see if we can find everything that I need to address, and then uh, we'll start working our way through them. I'm also gonna paint it, or correct the paint, and then do a ceramic coating too at the end. All right, so I'm just gonna go around the car and try and point out all the areas that need addressed. I have these little post-it note flags that sometimes I point, uh, use to point out things that are kind of hard to find. Uh, the emblem, I'm not sure what happened here. It looks like someone wood glued one on that isn't even the right one. So I ordered a new one of those, um, so I'll have to fix that. Don't think I'm gonna need a post-it note to remember that. Uh, I'm gonna try polishing the headlight lenses if not, BMWs are pretty convenient because they just clip on so you can order new ones without having to melt the glue or anything. I have a new front bumper. There's some scrapes on the underside of it. Looks like we have a spot here that I need to do something with, just a little bit. Looks like it is down to primer there, so I'll think about what I want to do there. And then the door obviously has some scratches on it. There's this one here. Um, and then obviously this stuff here. I think, I'm not sure what I'm gonna have to do here. Might try polishing it, let's see. Here, I'm hoping this is gonna come out with polish because it looks like rub off paint like from another vehicle or something. So that will need addressed, I think. That whole panel is, and the rear bumper is definitely by far the worst on this car. Um, I think eventually I'm just gonna get a new bumper, but for now, I'll try to make it look as good as I can. I wanna get an M bumper. No one makes a replica for the Tourings though, so you have to buy OEM BMW, which is pretty expensive. But I think based on the money I'm putting into this car, it's probably worth it. So eventually I'll do that. But for now, I'll see what I can do to make it look better. Then I noticed here, luckily this is plastic, so it's not gonna rust, but this is pretty deep, like all the way down into that plastic. So that's gonna need taken care of. So like we have another scuff here on the fender and this door too. I'm not really sure what these rear doors got into. This mirror pack here. I need to order a new clip for this. And then the other day I noticed the cowl is all cracking. So I ordered a new one, so that's on its way. All right, I'm sure I'll find more, but putting out some stuff to get started with. So first thing I'm gonna do is uh, hit this with some Chemical Guys 34 just kind of a heavy cut and using the orange pad, which is also the medium heavy, heavy cutting pad and see just kind of where we stand just after polishing. So I'd like to avoid adding touch up and wet sanding as much as I can.
right, so just hitting that with the, the one polishing step removed most of the red paint that is left on here. There's just a tiny few little spots of it. And it actually removed a lot of that scratching too. There's a few spots that have like burned through completely through the clear coat. Uh, so those will need to be touched up. But a lot of them are gone, so that's good. And so I'm just gonna hit this one more time with the heavy cut to try and get this red out. And then I'm gonna touch up these few spots. All right, so to apply the touch up paint, I got these like makeup applicators. They're like just these tiny little sticks with a little kind of like felt top or whatever. That's what I'm gonna use to apply the touch up paint. I find that when I use the little brush that always comes in these kits, I end up just putting way too much paint on. So I'm gonna use this tiny little applicator to try and just put the smallest amount of touch up possible. This one I put on too thick. These other ones are perfect. So you can see how these applicators work. It puts just like the perfect amount of paint on there and it doesn't build it up too high. Like this one, I had way too much paint on the applicator. So that's kind of terrible, but we'll sand it, sand it down. I guess I'm gonna let this dry and I'll move on to another panel. All right, so now we're moving on to a repair that's gonna be a little bit more challenging on this fender here. Um, this is definitely down to the primer here, so we're gonna to have to add color. It's not quite deep enough that I think I need to ask, add any um, glazing putty. For this here, where it's plastic and actually worn to the plastic, if I were gonna retain this bumper, I would probably put a little bit of glazing putty in here to build this up, but for the fender itself, where it's made of metal, didn't actually obviously eat any of the metal away. So I think I'm gonna get away with just using color and clear here. But kind of like the other areas, I'm gonna polish this first to see what I can remove just from the polish. Cause it looks like some of this might not actually be down all the way through the clear. Sorry, I'm not even showing that. Some of this stuff here on this edge might not actually be all the way down to the clear. So I might be able to polish that. Whereas this, there's obviously that's not gonna polish out, but we're not gonna hurt anything by trying. All right, so after polishing it, obviously we didn't create any miracles and add any paint with the polisher, um, but we did get rid of some of the surface scratches and some of the rub off paint. So we kind of narrowed down the area where we need to apply some touch up. Obviously this whole lip needs it here and then just ever so slightly through here. So I'm gonna use a regular size, one of these in this case, since I'm gonna be filling in a pretty large area. I'm gonna go ahead and touch this up. So here's what it looks like after touching it up. Obviously it looks a little bit better, or it looks better than it did before. Obviously the color is gonna be off slightly just cause it's brand new paint compared to old paint and it doesn't have the clear on it. But I think when, once we uh, sand this and put the clear on it, I think it'll look pretty good. I'm gonna make sure this dries really solid before I sand it. So I'm gonna give it an hour to dry. All right, now let's see what we can do to this passenger side door panel. Once again, it's really hard to show scratches on camera, but look at all the marks in here. Let's see what just the polish will do, and then we'll go from there. So after polishing, it's pretty much to the point where it is really hard to notice. I think like only yourself would ever really notice this, but I think I'm gonna go ahead and apply some clear to it and then wet sand it, just cause there's some areas where it just it like really scratched through the clear coat to the point where I don't want it to damage the base coat. So I'm gonna apply some of the clear and then I'll come in and sand it, wet sand it, and then polish it again. And hopefully it will look next to new. I had to go out and uh, buy some clear coat at the auto parts store because the BMW clear coat that I came with, it was, it was just too thick. I didn't really like how it applied, but 
it is so hard to see, but it looks even better just from pl putting the clear coat on and I haven't even sanded or polished yet. So I'm pretty confident that by the time I sand and polish this, it's gonna look much, much better. So I gave the clear coat plenty of time to dry. Now I'm gonna come back in with a block sander, which is just a piece of like paint steering stick and some 2000 grit sandpaper. And I'm gonna wet sand the area to try and remove all the high spots in the clear coat. And then obviously we'll have to polish it after this. And the idea behind the block is it creates a flat surface. So you're just removing the excess clear, not removing the, uh, like the low, you're only removing the high spots, ideally. See how it gets all cloudy from the wet sanding. The polishing is gonna take that out of it. Uh, I'm pretty excited to see what this looks like before. My God, that is impressive. I am super happy with the results. I feel like I have a lot of failures on this channel sometimes, but this was one that was 1000% a success. It's like pretty much completely gone. I mean, I can still tell, but oh my God, is that night and day difference. All right, here's the up close. I'll try and compare it to the after as well. I mean, you can like hardly even tell. I'll try turning this light off. It's actually like almost easier to see the scratches without that light on, but I mean, compared to before, it's incredible. All right, so today I'm gonna move on to the bumper, which is gonna be the most difficult part of this. I don't think I'm gonna make any miracles here, but hopefully I can make it look a little bit different. There's a chance some of this scuffing might come out when I buff. Because this, I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna fix this. Um, it's by no means gonna look perfect, but hopefully it'll look better than that. Uh, I'm gonna put some glazing putty in here and then go over it with touch-up paint, try and level it. I don't know what happened to this bumper. It's had a it's had a rough life. And that's why eventually I'm gonna need an M Sport bumper and just paint it. So this is what I'm doing now is just a temporary fix until I can get a new bumper. Um, but I think polishing, at least get this adhesive off from wherever there used to be a sticker here. And yeah. So first step, I'm gonna go ahead and polish it and then uh, we'll see what we, what we need to do. So I ended up using the eraser oil like you've seen me use on the channel before to get rid of that adhesive for that sticker. And unfortunately the polishing didn't really do anything, which is what I expected. That scuff, I could have just felt before and told you it wasn't gonna do anything. It's actually worn through down to the plastic. So that will have to get some color, unfortunately. I guess the color is not really matching very well, but I guess that's how it goes. Now I got a bunch of polish in there I need to get out. 
So for this piece here, or this damage here, I'm gonna go in with a razor blade and just try and get off all the tiny little uh, end pieces of plastic, basically like the loose flared up plastic. I'm gonna cut that off just so it's not protruding through when I put the glazing putty in here. I'm gonna apply glazing putty, which I'll show. Um, you can use like alcohol or paint prep as like a leveling compound to basically get that glazing putty flat and then I'll paint it. So, just gonna clean up the area one more time. I'll say that this package of glazing putty is a few years old now, so maybe it's not in the best condition. If you get some excess, it's not a big deal because it will it'll wipe off. All right, I'm gonna give this some time to set up and then I'm gonna come back with uh, paint prep or alcohol and just level it. Um, try and get rid of like the excess, but not in the crevice. And then I'll probably do it a second time just cause I can see there's a little bit of a low spot there but I want to give it time to dry. It doesn't take very long, maybe 10 or 20 minutes, and then you should be able to level it. So eventually you'll wear it down to it's just the low areas. Then I'm gonna come in here with my 2000 grit sanding block again, like I did on the door, and just try and get it all level. This is what it looks like after block sanding with the 2000 and 3000 grit. And it's pretty much flush or as good as it's gonna be. And now the alcohol and the wet sand obviously re-wets this bonding putty or glazing putty, so you have to let it dry again and then we can apply our touch-up paint to it. But based on how well the touch-up paint is matching, which is not very good, I don't think it's gonna look particularly good, but maybe it'll look better than it was. All right, now I'm gonna do the wet sand in this area. And exactly what I didn't want to happen happens is I wore through to a plastic spot, but that's all right, I'll touch it up before I clear it. Ideally, the whole purpose of that is to remove any high spots, but I guess there's that one piece of plastic where the bumper has kind of like protruded up, so I pulled the sand of the paint off of that. So I'm just gonna use one of those little pens and touch that up, and then I'll be ready to clear this. Um, like I said, this is gonna be far from perfect, but since I'm eventually gonna repaint the bumper, I'm not gonna kill myself trying to make it perfect. All right, the clear coat's been drying for a few hours. So I'm gonna go ahead and now wet sand it. I apologize, this is like the one spot in my garage that doesn't get very good light for filming. So this is what it looks like before wet sanding, or sorry, before polishing. Obviously it's not perfect, but it looks a lot better than it did with the black plastic here. The, that like, Duply color clear coat or whatever just like made the color look worse than it did without clear coat on it. I don't know, maybe it will wear or age in to look the same, but whatever, this bumper's getting repainted because it's terrible. This video being already as long as it is, I didn't want to do a how-to on removing and installing the M Sport bumper. But while I had the bumper off, I decided to go ahead and restore my headlights. Um, BMW is pretty convenient. You can just buy new lenses and they just clip in. So if you don't feel like wasting a few hours, I recommend just doing that. But I just use a basic 3M headlight kit, sanding it down and then polishing it, 
trying to remove all the hazy spots from it. They came out pretty good. I'm pretty happy with it, although it definitely took a lot of time. It probably could have been saved if you just go ahead and order the replacement covers for them. All right, so before I um, polish the car, I wanted to go ahead and paint this pillar here that's peeling. That way, if I get any overspray, it should be able to polish out. But I'm just gonna sand this down with some sandpaper and then paint it with some SEM, or yeah, SEM trim black. So I ended up uh, starting over again. And again, I didn't film it because I was frustrated, but I ended up using a razor blade actually down there to scrape off com completely all the old coating. And then I sanded down the metal and then uh, it looks pretty good. I got one small little run at the bottom that will bother me forever, but I'll probably be only be the person that will only ever notice it. So I guess this is the last coat I'm gonna do and see how it dries. All right, so sorry I stopped filming. I got kind of frustrated and just wanted to get it on. Uh, it was pretty difficult to align everything and I got it pretty good. It's not perfect, but this side for some reason I can't get raised up high enough for what I really like. But it is a M-Tech bumper mounted up. So I guess that's what I wanted. I'm a little frustrated because I ordered the piece that goes here so you lose the license plate and they, I guess, didn't send me it. And now it's too late now, so. Anyways, the color matches pretty good. It's not perfect. This is like ever so slightly more green than that, but from a few feet away, you don't really notice it. Now that I've got the M Sport bumper installed and I've addressed all the problem areas on the body, I'm gonna go ahead and do my final polish, which I'm using Chemical Guys 38 and a light polishing pad. I'm gonna go through and hit every panel on the car. This is the uh, part of the detail process that I find the most rewarding because you can finally start to see the efforts that you've made in the course of the overhaul. And once polishing is complete, and uh, I've used alcohol to clean off all the excess um, residue from the polishing left on the car, I'm gonna go ahead and apply my ceramic coating. I'm using CarPro C Quartz. I seem to like it so far, I can't really speak to the long-term um, benefits of it since I've only had it on my all track for a few months now, and then now I'm putting it on this car. Um, but you're just applying it with a crosshatch pattern, to about half a panel at once. And then you allow two to five minutes for it to flash. It'll actually start to turn like a rainbow color. And then you uh, come in with the lint-free rag afterwards and uh, wipe it off. Uh, I'm gonna do two coats of it. So I did one one day and one the next day. If you don't apply it within 60 minutes, you're supposed to wait till the next day uh, to reapply it. And then uh, once you've finished your second coat, you're supposed to use CarPro Reload, which is my normal spray-on ceramic coating application that I use in all my cars. Um, it definitely brought out the shine in the paint. Um, we'll see, I'll report back on how, the, how it holds up long-term. Uh, I actually went ahead and applied it to the headlights as well as all the black trim and I was almost equally as impressed with its ability to restore the black trim as uh, it did in making my paint shiny. So I would definitely recommend using it um, to restore the, the black trim on your vehicle. And this whole paint restoration process actually took long enough that my new windshield cowl came in from FCP Euro. So it was a pretty simple job to swap this out. Just marking where the wiper arms are on the windshield using some blue tape. 
unbolting them, and then it's pretty self-explanatory to remove the old cowl and pop in the new one, and definitely, again, just made the vehicle have a much better appearance without that cracking, falling apart window cowl. All right, now that we're all done, I'll do a walk around, try and put everything out. As you can see, that black spot on the bumper is a little bit less noticeable now. The black trim on the bumper that was all faded is just popping now with the ceramic coating on it. That driver's side rear door has removed some of the scratches. Some of those touch-up paint doesn't look the best with the clear coat. Kind of made the color uh, not match. That fender there is a... Uh, fix the spot that was down to the primer there m sport bumper obviously looks amazing they look great on these cars and the uh, headlights are much clearer now that i did that restoration it was off camera but i fixed a scratch on that passenger side mirror and then probably the biggest noticeable change in the whole car for me was that rear passenger side door where all that scratching is just pretty much completely gone now again black trim is looking much better all right, guys, so that's a wrap on uh, this episode. Thank you very much uh, for sticking with me. I know it's kind of a long episode, but hopefully this gives you an insight on some of the improvements you can make if you have an old car that might be showing some signs of wear. I'm definitely really happy with how it came out, and I hope this, uh, will, this paint will last me for a while longer because I absolutely love this green gray paint on my E46 Touring. Um, thank you guys for watching, and as always, if you... If you really like this video, please like and subscribe so I can share it with uh, share the content with more people and uh, stay tuned for next time. Thank you guys. Bye.